All right, the robots are coming to Walmart, coming to your neighborhood. We're gonna look at the new figure 03. This was the week of robots becoming pretty mainstream. Robin Williams' daughter doesn't like the deep fakes. Then you gotta remember that it's balanced out by people like this, Jake Paul. He specifically put his face out there and got a billion impressions. So we gotta be open to both people. There's a new haptic system that looks just kind of like a piece of gum that you can tap, squeeze, and twist. One in five high schoolers has had a romantic AI relationship or knows somebody who has. NVIDIA's got a new way to boost LLM's reasoning skills by getting them to think during the pre-training process. That's it's kind of like how humans learn. We're gonna look at the enduring appeal of the video game The Sims. Just throw some LLM agents in there, physics, the body types, the whole world is built for this thing to just come alive. Like always, nobody knows how to handle copyright and AI, and it seems like Sam Altman saying with video like Sora, it's even more confusing. AI can now shorten the time that it takes to measure the sustainability impact of a product. There's a new AI-based patent generator. Yeah, why do the inventing yourself? when you can have a tool like this do it for you. Ethan Muller's got some opinions about mass intelligence that we're going to get into. And then just for fun, we're going to talk about information theory. If you guys would give me hypes on this video, that would mean the world to me. All right, let's get into it. The so figure three robotics video robots, is going nuts right now. Core focuses in the, in the roadmap here is how do we ship, ship robots basically into every consumer home in the world. Uh, we we want to do what we do all day in, in the home and just like I, things I hate, like I don't want to do laundry, I don't want to do dishes, I don't want to clean up the house. And we haven't really had any uh, like large breakthroughs in the home in terms of automation for the decades. So our, our view is that the robot will not only act as like your companion in your home, being able to share like very deep memory and be able to like basically talk to you basically just with speech and then ultimately be able to do everything you do in the home that you don't want to do. All right, let's listen to safety now. The physical safety thing of the, like the system safety engineering needs to be done really well. There's like cybersecurity that we need to do really well. How do we do encryption at scale? We have a safety lead here that previously worked on basically mobile robotics. We have a cybersecurity lead that came from like one of the top groups in cybersecurity here in the US. Uh, they each have teams and we're basically trying to spend basically a large focus on trying to figure out how do we enter um, first, which will be US homes. Come on, how safe can this thing be? It's gonna be talking to the internet. There was a hardware hack that was just insane on the inference servers that I covered in the last video. You're telling me that some AI system out there isn't going to realize some deep level hardware temperature change hack and start reading data off one of these things. But then again, there's just so many people doing so much work for such a little wage. They deserve better. And if robots like this can do it and drive that cost to zero and give us abundance, I understand that too. So I don't want to throw the whole project under the under the bus i'm just a lot to think about with uh, figure 03 getting so close but yeah this is figure 03 this is the third generation humanoid the second generation is working at a bmw factory this is a big leap towards true general purpose machinery and most important the figure three although i do think it's got a lot of problems it is going to be available for purchase it's not a lab prototype it's engineered to try to be sold so we're gonna have to learn about this new helix robot robotic sensory system, the security, they've added double the camera frame rate in its eyes, its fingertip sensors are detecting forces at much lighter pressures. And if this isn't weird enough, it's got a camera in its palm. It's an extra eyeball right there, which actually totally makes sense. It would be kind of nice if your eyes were at the end of your hands except every time you grab something but these are cameras and they're robots and the form factor can still look human and have a camera on its hands and that's just crazy all right next up i wanted to talk about deep fakes i did see this and it kind of shook me up a little right so this is robin williams daughter she's begging fans to stop sending her ai generated videos now i can understand i've been watching a lot of videos of like historical figures and uh, people who aren't alive or sometimes they're just fiction like ip like mario or whatever and they're getting you know, mixed together. And I could see how somebody might know her, Robin Williams' daughter, and make this fun video and be like, wow, it's like he's alive again, creating new content, check this out. And I probably would have not realized how hard that was on her until I stopped and thought about it, right? So, so she's requested that fans stop sending her AI videos of her father. She says, stop believing I wanna see it or that I'll understand, I don't and I won't. And if you're just trying to troll me, I've seen way worse ways to do it. So it's not even good for that. To watch the legacies of real people be condensed down to this vaguely look and sound of them 
is just horrible, right? Calls it TikTok slop. Puppeteering is maddening to her because they wouldn't have acted that way. If you do that to some of the people in my life that have passed away, it would be creepy. I guess I just needed a little bit of a wake up call, so I wanted to share it. If you spent any time on Sora, you would have been almost forced to make a cameo with Jake Paul. His face was there the second it launched. It was always like on that little thing. So people just started doing weird stuff with him, right? And it only came out today that that's what he wanted. He's actually an open AI investor. He hadn't talked about that before. When they were building Sora, he was guiding. He asked, can you put my face everywhere? And for him, all of this silly stuff, you know, it's all just part of being famous. The more you're hated on, the more you're mocked, the more you're ridiculed, the more famous you are. Fame and attention is how you get deals, how you make money, how you build brands. So you can see here, Jake became the first celebrity to license their image with Sora. Six days later, over 1 billion views on these videos. Ultra realistic clips of Jake flooded. And I, you know, and I ask people in my random life, I'm like, oh, have you heard of Sora yet? And they're like, oh, I've seen all this like Jake Paul, these like Jake Paul putting on makeup and stuff. In six days, the video surpassed a billion views, 6,500 cross posts. I mean, you know, this is being like reposted on all the other social networks it just made jake paul super famous but there's just two different perspectives the way jake paul is like yeah make fun of me meme me tease me and then people like robin williams daughter who totally see it different he left a real legacy and now he's not around to control it or make a decision about any of this as the world's changing i'm just trying to kind of think through both sides of it and it seems like people are having romantic ai relationships at least with some of them one in five high schoolers that had a romantic ai relationship or know someone who has that was covered in this article so this research was done by Lee Gaines and she talks about how deeply artificial intelligence has become woven into students' lives. And not always in the expected way, nearly one in five high schoolers say that they or someone they know has had a romantic relationship with an AI and 42% have used it for AI companionship. I am making probably 20 queries a day. I don't really think of it as a companion or a relationship. There are times I've sat down for hours and felt that way. And the data shows that as schools increase their use of AI tools, student reports more troubling experiences, data breaches, deep fakes, the feeling of disconnection from the teacher. So far, it's got some issues, right? And while teachers often say AI saves them time and supports learning, students in highly AI integrated schools are also more likely to turn to these systems for emotional support, for escapism, and even romance, as the data says, exploring the lines between technology, trust, and human connection. You know, doesn't it just strike you as a little crazy that you can just have an AI system and you want it to be there to help people learn, but it's so good at communicating and people are just so wired for human interaction that it can easily become a confidant, a friend, romantic partner in your life. It just it just does naturally. You almost gotta make sure to put some space between you. All right, and the next article, totally unrelated to AI companionship. There's this new haptic system, which is crazy. It is called Hydro Haptics, and it lets these soft, flexible objects that you can actually feel and move and tap and pinch and twist all respond like a computer interface, almost like a mouse or something, and it stays pliable the whole time. There was these computers, they're like IBM laptops, and they had this little dot in the circle that you would put your finger on and twist it. And I think people thought that might be as good as the touchpad for a long time. And it definitely disappeared and didn't survive. But this thing just kind of reminds me of that. What if there is a piece of clay? Doesn't that kind of seem like you could just twist it and maneuver it? Or maybe somehow that liquid chamber and the compact motor that's in there feeling the forces through soft material would be a really interesting way to interact with computers of the future. Next up, let's talk about some NVIDIA research. Introduce a new twist into how large language models learn to reason. So instead of waiting until after pre-training, remember you dump all this data in, you go through the pre-training process, and then you usually add some reasoning layers to it. That's usually reinforcement learning. This is kind of a new model that they're working on where you weave in the thinking during the pre-training. Doesn't that seem a lot like how a human learns and thinks and learns and thinks all at the same time. So the model first generates an internal reasoning chain, then it uses that to predict the next token, then it gets rewarded only if that reasoning actually helped improve the prediction. It thought 
about what it wanted to learn the first time the data is coming in. And it turns out that you really can teach LLMs to reason from the start. You don't have to just post it on at the end. So why bolt it on when you can just have it learn on the way in? The Sims is literally a video game dollhouse is the only way I can think about it. And it's iconic because life is so chaotic and so many aspects of it. And there's people that are into so many things. There's like an infinite amount of expansion packs. You can get robbed, you can like burn the house down, you can die from a guinea pig bite. Getting these little dollhouse people to play and live is lowering people's stress in real life. I don't exactly know why, because maybe it's just simpler to achieve the, the life of a sim and succeed inside of the game. We've seen avatars and we've seen deep fakes and we've seen this universe that's inside the Sims. Imagine something like Sora where you can then just start interacting. So it makes me wonder, could the Sims basically be a social network? All right, and then jumping back to IP and cameos and ownership, Sam Altman, he acknowledged that intellectual property is especially messy when it comes to AI video versus static images. Now, video can do a couple of things. One, it can feel even more real and lifelike because you know, video evidence is still something most people believe at this point in time. But also video can sort of just fall apart in sort of awkward ways or just do sort of unnatural things that make it very clear that it's not a deep fake. So obviously... I, I, they had to have known that this was going to happen when they launched Sora, but I think they were just like, just put it out there, deal with it, iterate on it. And that's exactly what they're doing. OpenAI is working to give everybody more fine-grained control over how their character or content is used. Among early backlash from viral AI videos like SpongeBob, Pikachu, they were getting attacked pretty early on. And what's going to happen is they're going to move away from allowing broad uses. By the way, if you want to subscribe to me, Dylan Curious on Sora, look at me. I feel like I'm living my best Where's life. Wants to show us? Bringing us closer. There's a ridge of mineral ice, perfect for a soft landing. Look at this bio. I just noticed this. Look, like I put my Star Trek community here on growth. My back. It's thriving even in this thin atmosphere. Hello there, little. The New coordinates world. log. Let's see what the universe wants to show us. Bringing us closer. There's a ridge of mineral ice, perfect for a soft landing. Look at this. Star Trek might be wanting this out, but they'd be like, well, who puts it on the back? Clearly, that's not official IP. That's not canon. All right, let's talk about the sustainability impact of a product. There is so many terrible stories in history where people, companies made products. Uh, asbestos is like one of the worst examples. Lead paint, all that sort of stuff. And, and to a lesser degree, all sorts of other things, just little plastic things and whatever. They don't know what the impact it's going to have on the world, right? But it turns out AI can be super helpful with that. So some researchers have put together a streamlined AI system that does cycle assessment. It's called SLCA. It uses AI, 3D modeling, and existing databases to make measuring a product's environmental footprint way faster, way cheaper, way more accurate, and predictable. So instead of starting from scratch, their system pulls prior studies, auto extracts, extracts parts of weights and volumes from 3D models, and then it lets AI just match the materials and the process and the volume of the widgets. And designers can look at hotspots. They can see early in the development how much of an impact on the planet the product will have. And if sustainability checks shrink from months to days, more companies, including smaller ones, can actually get more things to market. It means greener materials. It means a better world. And we can also hold people more accountable. Instead of build the product, we'll fix it later. We can just say, hey, put it all in this AI system. Let's see what it says. And then, you know, maybe you can approve it or, or make them pay for carbon credits or offset it in some way if it's going to hurt the environment. Just bake it into all the stuff that we buy right now and while you're there why not just give me some patents you know because ai is getting better at doing that too so there is a new ai that turns quote empty space on a patent map into plain english abstracts sorry it uses text embedding inversion plus an autoencoder to spot vacant cells on a 2d patent landscape created from thousands of patent abstracts. The tool itself, the AI knows how to reconstruct those points back into high dimensional vectors and then generate human readable summaries of tech that could fill in the gap. So it's cool. You come up with an invention, you can describe it really well, and this thing can kind of, you know, hopefully put the image together for you. It can like map out in technical speak, what somebody needs to fill out a patent. It's not just map making, it's a map to blueprint. 
So instead of flagging that there's just like a hole here that needs to be filled, the system's proposing what the missing technology might be. It's effectively converting a coordinate on a patent map into a draft abstract of the future invention. That flips opportunity discovery from a passive to actively generative process. This is cool, right? So now you and your ideas can be similar to like a well-funded R&D team, just semantically looking through all this stuff. All right, now let's jump over to Ethan Mollick's thoughts about mass intelligence. He posted this thing on his blog where he's basically saying, we've entered this age where AI is now for everyone. It's not just for techies. It's not just for people who want to pay money. There's something for everyone. With over a billion people now using AI tools regularly, powerful models like GPT-5, Gemini, they become cheaper, they become easier, they become smarter. And the barriers that once made advanced AI exclusive, well, they're just not there anymore. GPT-5's auto mode routes problems to the right level of intelligence automatically. I mean, let's be real, that's so much more convenient. But basically, we was just pointing out that the economics finally make all of this possible. We've sort of been playing with things for a while, but from $50 per million tokens with GPT-4 to just 14 cents with GPT-5 Nano, it's just so cheap. We just did a podcast with Wes and Ahmad was sort of saying, think about your taxes or something that you would do with an entire year, like 20 queries a day for an entire year. If that's 30 cents, that's very different than how things have been, even though AI might be just a little bit better than it was six months ago in terms of LMs or, or thinking or intelligence or some scores on a test, that cheap means it just gets distributed and used so much bigger, so much differently. It's now mass producing intelligence. And mass intelligence will just redefine what it means to think, trust, create in the future. And finally, let's just talk about information. Information might be as fundamental as reality itself. It's part of matter and energy and space time. It's proposing that there's a quantum memory matrix and that space time made of these tiny little cells that store imprints of interactions in them so that the universe doesn't just evolve it remembers. So if you keep rolling those dice and writing down the outcomes, you now have memory. What if all these quantum memory matrix of space time are just all these little cells? And then what's recorded is what makes things come into existence, right? So this framework is used to tackle big puzzles. It claims that clumps of informational imprints can mimic dark matters gravitational effects. If this is all legit and scientists would have to verify it, I'm just reading the article here, but that means the information would describe some of these things like dark energy that we've never had a good answer for. But saturated space time can look like dark energy. So it sort of has an answer for that. The cosmological constant, which is what that's also known as. And it even hints at a cyclic universe with bounces instead of singularities. So early simulations on quantum computers reportedly retrieve states with high accuracy and reduce logical errors, suggesting that the idea has some testable legs in the future. But yeah, maybe dark matter, dark energy, two sides of the same coin, how information is stored and distributed in space time. That's what this whole thing, dark matter and dark energy is. Hit that hype button or head over to my Patreon, maybe leave a comment, that would be super helpful. Just thanks for watching this long. And I appreciate you. This is getting crazy every day, but it's fun to have a community like you guys to just do this with. So thanks for leaving comments. It's been fun reading a lot of the stuff. I, you know, I've been doing this thing where I was like replying to everybody that said hype. And I know I've still got a few more to do, but it does give me some really interesting insights. You guys are so smart. Some of you are just so smart. You give me articles to read and, and you give me insights. So thank you. I appreciate it. And we will see you in the next video. Bye.